Hello and welcome to my review of Lord Caldor Drago for Grey Knights for Warhammer 40,000 from Games Workshop. This model uh, will cost you £17, consists of only four components and comes with a 40mm base and as you can see um, is in fine cast. Yeah. Unfortunately, fortunately, however you want to uh, take that. Fortunately in that um, it's going to have a lot more detail um, than a plastic version, but unfortunately in that it's a bit of a pain to work with. Uh, if you've ever had any fine cast models before, um, the it's mainly the structure supports and the flash and the cleaning up that you have to work on. Um, still, it is an improvement over metal. Metal models are uh, a bit of a pain to clean up too, and they're heavy, um, and they're always breaking off and things. This has its downsides too. I was hoping for an updated version because this model has been out for a very long time. It originally started out in metal, um, but uh, we still haven't got one. We had a Castle and Crow update though. Maybe we'll get a uh, Drago and possibly a Stern update at some point. Anyway, we're gonna have a closer look at uh, Lord Caldor Drago, the man, the legend. Um, he's been on the, the old warp dust. He's a really nice looking miniature. He's got this Titan greatsword, which I think Games Workshop um, painted in purple, which looks awesome. Uh, he's got a load of detail, you know, Grey Knight's iconography everywhere on this Terminator armor. He's got this uh, lovely storm shield with uh, some graphics on there and some purity seals um, and the typical shoulder pauldron for the Grey Knights. Uh, and then he's got his uh, gauntlet mounted um, storm bolter, which I think you do have to drill the holes for, you gotta be careful. And then he's got this Titan sword, which I've tried really, really hard to get straight because I think it was a little bit bent, but I think it bulges in certain places. So that gives you the opinion that it is a bit bent. Um, You've got the two head options. Uh, you've got the helmeted version, which is, yeah, unfortunately one of the Terminator heads, one of the Terminator helmets, which um, kind of gives you the idea that the, the whole of his face is kind of sunken back. Um, when reality it's not, the, his head is just a bit further back in the, in the helmet. But yeah, the shape of it gives that impression. Um, luckily though, you can have him helmetless if you so wish um, to give him a bit more kind of humanity and this is his head here uh, he's got this uh, you know this psychic hood is all connected they're all psychers aren't they Grey Knights so um, so you can opt for that if you wish um, up to you though but I like all my most of my space marines with the, the helmets and then he's got some kind of banner thing with uh, iconography as well um, and some you know scrolls I think they are uh, that are dangling from there wasn't too difficult of a model to put together as i say the difficulty is in the cleanup and spotting all of those um you know connecting points uh, and leftovers from from the mold but uh yeah not too bad model to put together anyway um that is caldor drago let's do some uh size comparisons right away uh, we're gonna go in easy and just compare him to other grey knight terminator models so here's two I prepared earlier and um, this one is a very old one I think this probably came out in like early 2000s but it's a metal model it's on the same size base when they came out um, similar size uh, that is not poseable other than I think maybe the arms are a bit poseable uh, but yeah getting those shields on was a pain from what I can remember and um, this is a bit more of, of a better comparison um, newer plastic um, Grey Knight Terminators but again these have been out for quite a while i don't know why i've given this one a side cannon and the thunder hammer i'm not sure whether i'm allowed to do that but i just did because it looks cool um but yeah his size again i would have liked to see um games workshop refresh this model and bring him out in plastic maybe put him on a little bit of a of a bigger base with some kind of demon head or maybe him thrusting his sword into a demon head or something just just so that he stands out a bit more than these normal grey knight terminators because as it stands it might as well other than the banner if he didn't have the banner on he might as well just look like another member of that unit which isn't a bad thing but he's lord caldor drago <laughs> um let me compare him to another like grey knight this is another metal one but a, a standard one in the normal power armor and then finally 
I'd say the biggest revelation of all is with the new Castle and Crow model, which is absolutely huge, um, mainly because of that whopping great big scenic base there that adds so much height to him. If he didn't have that scenic base, he would only be a little bit taller uh, than Drago, which isn't too bad, um, but still. Now, as I've said with, in uh, Crow's uh, review, um, Crow's model just looks out of place with the whole of the rest of the range. So they either need a big refresh or they just need tweaking or something. Or maybe you can choose not to put it on that base, um, but up to you. But that's the comparisons I wanted to make with the other Grey Knights. Um, with uh, a Land Raider, I do have a Land Raider Banisher um, from uh, Forge World. I think it's called a Redeemer now, but we all know what a Redeemer is. Um, he looks all right, size comparison, next to a Land Raider. Not too bad. You can imagine him probably squeezing in there. I don't know how the banner furls or unfurls maybe games workshop will have some kind of animation for that at some point on warhammer plus um that would be cool if if they did or maybe the banner is just as it is and they have to crouch down or maybe they attack i don't know i'm thinking i'm thinking about physics in a 41st science fiction universe as always um but that's the uh gray knights comparisons the final comparisons i like to make is just with the normal space marines so i've got uh, primaris on the right normal space marine on the left and then slime marbo in the middle so if we compare um Drago to a normal Space Marine. He's a bit bigger, but of course, if we compare him to a Primaris, Primaris is a fair bit taller now. There's a bigger, bigger difference in height between him and a Primaris than there is with the Space Marine. And then Slime Marbo is a fair bit shorter there. But that's where he stands if you wanted to compare him with normal Space Marines. Just because he's in Terminator armor, I might as well just compare him to a, a Custodes just to show you how big these Quill and Terminators are absolutely huge, very thick boys. And there's only one more thing for me to do uh, in this review, and that is go through all of his ninth edition rules. And you can find them in the uh, brand new Grey Knights Codex um, under the HQ section. And he is top place at the very start of all of the data sheets. Um, he's the very first HQ choice. Uh, he is a PowerPoint's cost of a nine and a points cost of 180 points. He's a very, very expensive uh, unit. Let's read his stat line. His movement is five inches. His weapon skill and ballistic skill are both two plus. His strength is four, toughness four, seven wounds, six attacks, leadership nine, and a save of two plus. He's equipped with a Titan Sword, Sanctum Sigillum, Mastercrafted Storm Bolter, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades. Your army can only include one Kaldor Drago model. So his Mastercrafted Storm Bolter, um, works a little bit differently than a normal Storm Bolter. Um, you know, let's just compare it to Castle and Crows. So the range is the same, 24 inches. The, uh, the type is uh, Rapid Fire 2. Strength is 4, but this is where it changes. It's got an arm penetration of minus 1 and a damage of 2. So it just adds a little, little bit more of a bite uh, in range. The Titan Sword, it's a melee weapon. It's a Strength plus 4, AP minus 4, damage 3. Um, so that would bump up his strength to eight, um, pretty much like a power fist, really, but without the debuff of uh, minus one to hit. Um, so very strong in combat with those six attacks and the weapon skill two plus and the high strength, high AP and high damage. Not only that, um, although I would have liked to have seen him with the toughness five, he does have the Sanctum Sigillum, which is that storm shield, which gives him a three plus invulnerable. So he's very survivable. Um, again, if he had the toughness five, he'd be unstoppable. You know, six attacks, two plus save, three plus invun, two plus to hit. Yeah, he's strong. Um, this is what you're paying your points for. Abilities, Knights of Titan and Teleport Strike. He's got Rites of Battle. While a friendly Grey Knight's core unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, re-roll a hit roll of one. Supreme Grand Master. In your command phase, select one friendly Grey Knight's core and Grey Knight's character unit within six inches of this model. Until the start of your next command phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, you can re-roll the hit roll. Psyker. This model can attempt to manifest two psychic powers in your psychic phase and attempt to deny two psychic powers in your opponent's psychic phase. It knows smite and three psychic powers from the Dominus discipline. Keywords, Imperium, Sanctic Astartes, Grey Knights, Infantry, Character, Psyker, Psych-Out Grenades, Supreme Grandmaster, Terminator, Honored Knight, Kaldor Drago. So there you go. How does he compare to the other um, like HQ uh, choices um well the only one that i can kind of like compare him to straight away 
would be Grandmaster Valdus. He's cheaper, he's 150 points. Um, he's got pretty much the same stat line except uh, one less wound. Um, he doesn't get his three plus and vulnerable, but he does get a four plus because he's got an Eon Halo. And he's got a, a big thunder hammer. He's equipped with this huge demon ha hammer called the Malleus Argyrum, I think it is. Uh, and that bumps his strength up to 8, which is the same as Drago, but his AP is only minus 3 and the damage is 3, so Drago's sword is better. The thing that Drago has, though, in his abilities is that um, he's got that... He's got the Supreme Grandmaster, so you can re-roll hit rolls with him, which is what Voldus doesn't have. So if you were picking one, pick Drago all the time. And there ends my Caldor Drago uh, review. It's such a cool character and very decent rules, very strong, one of the strongest Grey Knights uh, units out there. Um, it's just a shame that we haven't had a refresh of his model because I think now, more than ever, Games Workshop could just do him so much justice, which he deserves as the Supreme Grandmaster of the Grey Knights. What do you think of Lord Caldor Drago? Please do put your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.